Hello, Matthew Williams here with a quick video to say that I am quite excited by a new graphics card I've got. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit of the problems with some of the old graphics cards I had. This is my old workhorse, which is a Radeon HD 7970, which is a GPU and can be used for video editing in Premiere. Works from uh, everything from CS6 to Premiere Pro CC 2015, CC 2017. All the versions works with this card, so it's it, it works. And they're cheap. You can pick these things up, you know, like for 70 quid. And it works, it's good, and it works with all the old plugins like Neat Video, uh, going back to version 3.5, will work with that card. But I thought it's time for a change, so I decided to kind of get something a little bit more exciting. So um, I ordered an Arnex, RX, <laughs> or oh, sorry, an R9 290X. Now this is the highest end graphics card you can get, full stop, that is recommended by Adobe in their specifications listings. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't other cards that won't work, higher quality cards, as I'm just about to tell you, that won't work with Premiere, they will. But it's just whether or not they've gone through Adobe's testing procedures to test for reliability. And that's where I'm going to talk to you about the differences between the 290 and this puppy, okay, the R9 380. Now, the reason I picked up the R9 290X, R9, um, is because it was the highest rated card by Premier, approved by Adobe. And I thought, well, by getting that card, I'm going to be getting the best thing. So here's the problem, right? With my old 7970, um, this was an overclockable card. But would you want to overclock it? No, because unless you had some sort of liquid cooling, I don't think even liquid cooling could really stop this thing from overheating to the point where it would crash. So what you had to do instead of overclocking is you had to underclock. And I was taking this from being a 900 megahertz processor with you know 1100 meg clock speed for the memory, and I was taking it down to 800 CPU well GPU speed and 800 for the memory, and then with a 100% cycle of GPU usage on heavy GPU plugins and uh, colorization and things like that, um, and noise cleaning, uh, that card would then with a high fan rate, so it was quite noisy, so I would turn the fan up to do renders, turn it down when I wanted to watch videos, you know, go on the net, that sort of thing. But for renders, I had to turn the fan up. Okay, then I thought, well, I've got the new R9 290X, which is the approved card. So this little beast is going to, as you can see it there, this little beast, which is a lot bigger, which is a lot bigger than that, um, uh, first one, uh, it's going to be a better card. Well, here's what happened. It got hot, and I'm talking really hot. We're talking like, uh, whereas my 7970 used to get up into the 60s, and I used to consider that like, you know, don't want to go much higher than that. The R290, R9-290X, God, it's a mouthful, isn't it? The 290X, let's just say, uh, that was getting up to 80 easily with 100% fan on. So that thing was like a jet taking off. And it was it was a noise. It really was. It was like Bitcoin mining territory. You know, we don't want to go near that. Um, so what else was happening? The, um, the UPS I've got. I have a UPS, smart UPS for power outages it was tripping that because it was taking so much current. So the 290X was a beast and it was worrying me because it was climbing up above the 80 degrees and I looked to see what people were saying the maximum temperature was you could get on the 290X and they said don't really want to have much more than 80, that's the max temp. 
and it was climbing above that and I was like mm -mm, I don't want to have to be pausing my renders to kind of let it cool down to you know because who the hell wants to do that I want to be doing an overnight render eight hours solid chugging away and in the morning the machines not crashed and you have your render you know getting the most out of it so um, that card was kind of like ah now I paid money for that <laughs> and then somebody came along a friend of mine and said well you can have this one if you want this was given to me by by work and you can have it and it's like ah okay well that's really nice thank you let's give it a go now people say what's the difference between the R9 380 which obviously costs a lot of money it's got the same memory as this one and what's the difference well they both work in Premiere Premiere works perfectly with the new 380 card even though it isn't down on the specifications list it works perfectly I run it through its paces I've not found any problems at all using the 380 plus also it's faster than the 290 it is faster but here's the real clincher the 380 does not get hot here we are have a look at my uh, I'm doing a render at the moment as you can see I'm rendering and let's have a look how much usage we got 99% well it's 100% usage so it's rendering with 100% usage which is you know a specific plugin I'm using in Premiere which I know is quite heavy and that thing it goes between you get the occasional zero but it's mostly 100% so that's the heaviest type of GPU usage you can get when you're doing a render and let's have a look at the speed the speed of the fans down at 44 can hardly hear it and just to prove that if you turn it up you can hear it let's turn it up to 100 listen you don't need it you do not need it because look down at 44 let's have a look or 46 you can see over the period of time we've been talking there's been no change you know it well it just when I took the fan up to a hundred percent it went down a degree you know but realistically it, you do not have to have the fan up high so you can hear yourself think you can run along 100% GPU render the card stays cold you don't have to underclock it it's running at its full potential so when people say to you oh yeah well there's as many cores in uh, many CPU cores inside this GPU card as this one and this one ha doesn't have as much as this and they kind of like do the specs if you look on GPU boss it will say what's the difference between this card and this card and it will actually come out about even and people will say well if it comes out about even why do I need to upgrade why do I want to get rid of my 290x card you know for a more expensive newer 380 when the specs say they're the same it literally comes down to whether you want to hear yourself think whether you want to use more power and whether you want to uh, keep the card running happier cooler longer because as we all know hot things tend to die sooner so if you keep them cooler and if they run cooler you'll be happier so I can actually recommend um, the newer ranges of cards for that reason and uh, I may even get um, two of them to uh, halve the render times because they seem to work quite nicely and uh, it's just not going to heat up the room you know so I'm not going to have a, a furnace in the corner of my room so anyway thanks for watching and hope um, this uh, kind of helps you uh, oh there is one last thing yes the last thing um, if you are trying to run the drivers the latest drivers which is 17 version onwards drivers for the R9 380 I encountered a pretty serious problem and I had to get Adobe involved to kind of find out what was going on and they kind of gave me a workaround but it wasn't a fix it was definitely not a fix but it it was a workaround and it did actually fix the problem right I've got two two monitors here one is a 50 inch uh, monitor television on HDMI and that is used for watching my final outputs and then I've got my uh, what is it 42 inch or something monitor here which is my desktop monitor for doing my stuff Okay, so you can see I've got, you know, I've got my that one over there, that one over there. Um, okay, I was getting a black screen when I was running Premiere on my editing monitor, so I was getting a black screen, but it was coming out fine out of my television. So I could press play, 
and I could watch stuff but I couldn't see it in both monitors and I couldn't play around with the editing because this one would freeze and there was no way to get around it. You could turn off the Mercury engine and reset Premiere and it would work but then it was software mode so there was no GPU acceleration for the editing and I tried everything I couldn't work out what the hell was going on and this is the problem right if you come down to your settings for your Radeon the Crimson settings um, if you go to your display settings it tells you which port way, way the ports have been ordered okay so it then makes a, a decision when you put the card in for the very first time it says what devices do you have plugged in and it says well I've got a Toshiba television and I've got my hands G monitor behind me so it decided all on its own to make device one the television which is actually a little bit silly because it's a TV yeah and it decided to make my monitor device display two okay you know that shouldn't really matter because what you can do is you can just flip those around in the settings in the window settings as I shall show you here you just go right click uh, now you go you go screen resolution and you just say look make this television my hands G my main monitor so make all my icons come up on that one and make my premiere come up on that one and that's just display device 2 and I will extend my monitor onto it and you know that's that should be fine and it is fine it works for everything it works on the desktop videos YouTube it all works that's fine except in Premiere because if device 1 is your TV and device 2 is your monitor you can't use Premiere to display you'll get the black screen problem so you have to set it up so that the devices are the other way around so that in if the Radian then in effect would see would see the hands G as device one which is up here device one and the Toshiba being device two then you wouldn't have to swap them round in the control panel screen settings and everything should work and if you've got this problem you can test it out by dragging your Premiere if you've got the black screen problem drag your Premiere minimize it drag it over onto your other device and then make your Premiere play back do its transmit mode the transmit mode on your TV or secondary device and if you find that the black screen problem doesn't work is no longer there and it works if you find that that fixes the problem then you've got this problem so it should be as simple as going into the settings and saying to the uh, Radian drivers hey I want the hands G to be the number one device yeah but there's no options for that there are no options to be able to do it you used to be able to do it in the old catalyst drivers but you can't do it in these new ones it decides what is going to be device one and what's going to be device two so oh there should be a workaround shouldn't there you know logically he says logically ha 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 we can do it because the HDMI that I'm connecting my television to is not the same as my DVI so all I have to do is put a DVI to HDMI connector on this one and connect my hands G into that one yeah and then it will switch the order you'd think so wouldn't you but no it won't work because guess what it doesn't matter which order you put the ports in it will reassign the ports and and still the Toshiba will be device one and the hands G will be device two so it doesn't matter which order you put them in the ports it will reassign them back and you've got the same problem again Radian drivers being retarded and stupid and giving you no control there are no controls in these drivers now they've taken everything away it is rubbish I mean they've got they got settings for 3d games playing but for actual control of devices and what connects and how they connect it's all gone it's gone yeah so like I said now we'll roll ourselves back in time this is an issue that affects users of Premiere that find they're having a black screen if they're using device drivers 17 okay there is a fix and I found it and 
Adobe don't know about it, so I will be letting them know. Um, the, the device driver 16.8 and lower works. You don't get the black screen problem. So, you know everyone tells you, use the latest drivers. The latest drivers are, are great because they solve all the problems. No, they don't. I keep telling people this, not always. You always have to try earlier version drivers because quite often later drivers, they will actually cripple them, take things out, mess things up. Who knows if they do it on purpose? Who knows whether or not they kind of do these things to make you want to get a new card, uh, you know, planned obsolescence. But all I can tell you is it works in 16.8 and it doesn't work in 17. So if you have a problem with your system not working, Try an earlier driver, push it back a few numbers and see how you go. Anyway, I won't bore you with technicalities anymore, but hopefully this has helped you in your absolute hell that it can be setting up graphics cards. So thanks very much for watching. And I can't find the stop button. Goodbye.